Welcome everyone to Invest in Interest. This is Shane back again from another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is February 6th. We are going to take a look at Steel Dynamics. This is out of the material sector. Let's jump right into the video. And if you have not done so or you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that thumbs up if you find any value in the content. Hit that subscribe button down below. Join us on this journey of financial freedom. Hopefully you are on your own journey as well. Join the vested interest community and hit that notification bell so you are notified whenever we put out any new content like this video here. We do stock pick of the day videos Monday through Thursday when the market is open. I do a portfolio update every Sunday morning at 730. I also cover monthly the stocks I'm looking to buy as we go into a new month and all of the activity in the portfolio from the previous month, any options that we were in, any dividends paid out, the total dividends for the month. And those are two monthly updates. We also do some uh, miscellaneous videos throughout the year whenever I find a, a topic I'd like to cover with the community. Now this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how we set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company on a high level or review companies in my portfolio to see if they are still meeting the criteria I've set. Understand the business, growing free cash flow over the last five years. We're looking for a growing dividend, dividend payout ratio of 75% or less. Now this does not apply to REITs, BDCs, some other companies that are like REITs that are required to pay out more than 75% of their free cash flow. Uh, REITs, for example, must be out 90%. Check valuation based on dividend yield theory to see if it's presenting any value. Buy below current cost basis if it's already in my portfolio or within 15% of a 52-week low if I'm looking to add. Return on invested capital return on equity. I'm looking for 10% or better or greater than its industry average. And re earnings per share growth. I want 5% projected over the next five years or better or again, greater than its industry average. For banks, I also throw in price to book. You can use price to book for any company, uh, but make sure you are comparing that company to other companies in the sector. Price to book for banks, just use one, one being fair value, anything under one, undervalued, anything over one, overvalued. Must meet five of eight to be investable or six of nine. And then if it does meet, you know, the criteria I'm looking for, it goes on my watch list and then I do more of a deep dive into the company. So let's jump into the video. Again, we're going to run through this exactly how I've got it uh, lined out here for the overall video we're watching on Steel Dynamics. So if you want to know more about this company, check them out at stld.steeldynamics.com. That's stld.steeldynamics.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. Founded in 1993, today Steel Dynamics is one of the largest and most diversified domestic steel producers and metal recyclers in the United States with facilities located throughout the United States and in Mexico. We operate using a circular manufacturing model, producing lower carbon emission. There's that low carbon emissions, right? Carbon emissions or carbon capture. These are the, some of the new bu buzzwords you're going to hear out there. AI is another new buzzword. Electronic vehicles, right? There's a lot of new buzzwords that get people excited. Uh, this just happens to be one of them. Quality steel using electric arc furnace technology, EAF, with recycled ferrous scrap as the primary input. Our circular economy is driven by the passion and dedication of our innovative teams at each of our operating platforms, steel, steel fabrication, and metals recycling. So they're like a closed loop company, right? They're taking in metal that's been recycled. They're creating new products to ship out. And that would be stuff like rails for railroads, steel for construction. That is what they are providing. That is what they do as a company. Now, the reason we're taking a look at them down 1.04% on the day. We are talking about Steel Dynamics Incorporated, ticker STLD. Again, out of the material sector. Close out the day at $120.23. 52-week range as low as $90.55, as high as $136.46. So if you were to look for this, what is it at 15% of its 52-week low? You would take that $90.55 and multiply by 1.15. That would be $104.13. So if you were trying to pick this up within 15% of its 52-week low, you'd look for an entry point of $114.13 or lower. Obviously, 52-week ranges change from year to year, month to month, quarter to quarter, but that's how you would do it. 1.15 uh, would be 15% of its 52-week low. You're using the, the one would be 9055.15 is 15%. Average volume, 1.3 million. Today's was 885,000. You can see that it looks like it actually dropped off quite a bit in the morning, recovered there around 10, 11, 
and then steady drop throughout the rest of the day. Market cap of 19.447 billion, a beta of 1.41. So this is much more volatile than the overall market. You could use this volatility to your advantage. Again, there's the range, $90.55 to $136.46. I like it a little lower than where it's currently at uh, for an entry point. But again, when a stock is real volatile, you could potentially use that volatility and catch it at one of its low points and then ride that volatility back up over time. Price to earnings ratio, low on this one, $8.21 per share. Earnings per share EPS, very nice, higher than its price to earnings ratio, sitting at $14.64 per share. Earnings date, April 17th through April 22nd, sometime in that window if you're interested in earnings calls. For dividend, $1.70 paid out on the year. They have a low starting dividend yield, 1.4%, but that is not necessarily a bad thing if it's paired with high dividend growth. We'll see that here in a little bit. X dividend date was December 28th. They paid out on January 16th. So you would be in line for the next dividend payout if you were to buy them now, though you're going to have to wait a little bit since they just paid out here this past January. Now, to look at dividend yield theory, you'd click on statistics. You go down to dividends and splits. You look at their five-year dividend yield average, 2.17%, compared to its current 1.4%. Again, over here, 1.4%. And since it is lower than their five-year average, it speaks to overvaluation on this one. That's why I'm saying I would want more of a pullback on this one because dividend yield theory is telling me this is potentially overvalued where it currently sits and quite a bit overvalued, actually. Payout ratio is very low, 11.61%. As we saw there, ex-dividend date was December 28th, payout January 16th. So again, you wouldn't be in line for the next payout. You just have to wait a little bit. Now we're going to look at free cash flow. Under financials, you'd click on financials. And this all can be found on Yahoo Finance. That's where I pulled this information from. I always recommend more than one source. We're going to look at another source here in a little bit. Make sure you're choosing more than one source. Any sources that you like, just make sure you look at more than one so you can make sure the information you are getting is accurate and up to date. We're going to look at free cash flow. A lot of good information under financials, their balance sheet, their income statement, their debt to equity ratios. Is their revenue growing? Are their margins in spanning? Are they paying down debt? A lot of good information. You should understand that if you are going to be investing in individual companies. If you don't want to take the time to look at a balance sheet, look at an income statement, then you should be investing in ETFs or index funds, not individual stocks. Free cash flow is what we're looking for here. 2020, it was at $211 million. 20, negative 211 million. 2021, they went positive at 1.1 billion. 2022, up to 3.5 billion. So far, 2023 numbers looks like they're not quite over with the year at 2.3 billion. I'm not sure exactly whenever they end out their 2023 years, but so far we haven't seen the total numbers. You can see here, it does look like nice growth from 2020 to 2022. Looks like a bit of a drop in 2023, though we'll have to wait for the final numbers. Overall, I'm going to say growing free cash flow on this one. And they are repurchasing their own shares. You can see here 106,000 there, 1 million, 1.06 million, 1.8 million. Looks like 1.4 so far in 2023. So what that means is if they are repurchasing shares, if you buy this company, let's say you buy 10 shares, and then you never put another dime in this company and just collect the dividends. As they repurchase shares, you actually own a little bit more of the company, even though you're not necessarily adding more capital to your position. Now, another source that I like is stockanalysis.com. Again, you pick any sources that you like. These are just two I like. Just make sure you're not just blindly following one source. Information could be outdated. It could be inaccurate. And this is a way to make sure that you are getting accurate and up-to-date information. Now, nine analysts have taken a look at this one. They call it a consensus hold. I would agree with them. Again, I would like something more closer to this low they have, a low estimate of $98, which would be a 18.48% decrease from where it currently sits. Like I said, I would like this around 105 or lower. I would be willing to, you know, jump in at 105 or under that back towards that 52-week uh, low. $98 would definitely be a good entry point for me. Average estimate of $113.33. Even this is lower than where it currently sits. That would be a 5.73% decrease. And the only way it looks like you'd make any money is if it happened to hit their high of $130. That would be a 8.14% increase from where it currently sits. All the while, you could collect that 1.6 or 1.7% dividend yield where it currently sits. Now, we're going to look at statistics here. Look at return on invested capital, return on equity, see how financially efficient the company is at reinvesting its funds back into itself, making acquisitions, making uh, paying down debt. You know, that's what this is looking at. 
and I like 10% or better on both. Return on equity ROE sitting at 27.64% beats the 10% that I'm looking for. Return on invested capital 20.23% again beats the 10% I'm looking for. Now the only downside here, I did not see a forecasted EPS earnings per share growth. Again, I like 5% or better. So that would be a tick on the negative though I would want to do a little more research into some other sites to see if they have a forecasted. And I didn't see anything for a revenue forecast either, though that is not necessarily one of my metrics. I always cover it. Now we're going to take a look at the dividend growth here. 25%, again, low payout ratio to start with at 1.6%, 1.7% currently, but very high dividend growth. 25% dividend growth, that's smoking high. With a low paired with a very low payout ratio, 11.64%. So that that really is supercharged dividend growth. You know, I like stuff down in the single digits, six, seven, eight percent. Anything in the double digits is great. And 25% is just smoking high. Quarterly payer, they do pay out on the January, April, July, October time frame. Not a lot of companies do, so that's nice to see. December 2020, they were paying 25 cents. December 2021, or I'm sorry, September 2021, they jumped it up. Nope, I'm sorry again. March 30th, 2021, they jumped it up to 26 cents. Let's see if that holds true. Yep, March 2022, 34 cents. And again, March 2023, 42 cents and a fraction of a penny. So it looks like they raised their dividends in March. So I would expect their March, uh, next March dividend, ex dividend date to see a raise. And the next uh, payout January would be when you see that increase. So they just paid out that 42.5, uh, actually April. So March for a dividend, ex dividend date increase, and April for the increase in the payout. Well, that is really it for this one. Let me know what you think of Steel Dynamics down in the comment section below. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Hopefully you're on your own dividend growth journey as well or investing journey. Maybe you're a, a growth investor. Maybe you're a, a ETF investor. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their own investing style and their own investing criteria. So long as you are consistently investing into the market, I think you will do well over time. Uh, I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So if you have a company like Steel Dynamics you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down below. I do have a lot of them right now that are kind of piling up. I'm going to try to get to, but I have others on my list as well that I, love, I want to cover. So I'm going to get to the ones that people have recommended. I will get to them eventually. Uh, just be patient with me and uh, you'll see those eventually. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great week, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investor journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and money. You should never invest any amount not come to losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation and circumstances and select criteria. Or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.